Hello everybody, I am Dr. Farhan Zameer, an adjunct professor and academic specialist at Biotechnica Bangalore. And for today, we are here on a special research series that is my research and specially captioned as from ideas to innovation. So what is this ideas to innovation and what is the topic for today's uh, video? Let us look in and uh, for today, we are uh, talking on a very, very intense topic and this topic is referred to as Ayur Phytochemistry. Now, what is this Ayur Phytochemistry? Let us try to understand in detail. Let's dwell in. Welcome back. So, as I have promised you, so if this is a special research series that is my research and for today we are trying to discuss a very very in-depth concept and this is on Ayur phytochemistry. Now there are a few terminologies before we move forward which has to be understood and this is on what is this Ayur phytochemistry. Now there are three different components or three different interdisciplinary components which we need to understand. The first interdisciplinary component what we need to understand is Ayur. So this Ayur refers to Ayurveda and phyto refers to the phytomolecules and then chemistry is the understanding of these phytomolecules for the benefit of humankind. So this is the entire caption which is Ayur phytochemistry. So for this to you know um, we had uh, inquiries from most of the researchers because in, in especially in traditional Indian universities and uh, institutes most of the research scholars they are trying to elucidate phytomolecules and then trying to know the bioactivity of these phytomolecules. But what is the logic of the utilization of these phytomolecules? This comes from the ancient literature and especially from Charaka Samhita or from Shushrita Samhita or from Nagarjuna and hence we are trying to incorporate a combination of Ayurveda, phytochemistry and the bioactivity which is actually being executed in understanding the mode of action. So moving on forward, so as I was trying to make you understand, um, in Ayurveda, which is one of the most ancient, you know, uh, form of medicine. Uh, so here Ayurveda has a specific branch, which is called as Rasa Shastra. Now this Rasa Shastra uh, deals on the science of mercury. Yes, you heard me right. It is the science of mercury. And as you see that this is Acharya Nagarjuna, who says that if you can tell me, you know, or if the entire world, if it has to be free of any kind of disease or disorder, then it is with the attainment of absolute control over mercury. So what he says is, okay, mercury can play a very, very crucial role when it is being utilized in a very proper way at a specific concentration. It has the power to deal with any kind of, it has the power to cure any kind of, uh, you know, ailments. So that is what he claims. And for our surprise, okay, this is a controversial component, especially in, you know, uh, between, uh, you know, the allopathic uh, mode of medicine and with that of uh, Ayurveda. But here, uh, let me try to take an example and then try to dwell upon. So, um, uh, here you can look at, uh, at uh, the utilization of diamond. Now, diamond in Ayurveda, it is called as Vajra or in Sanskrit, it is called as Vajra. Um, so, you know, uh, diamond uh, at a very particular concentration has been utilized for infertility, cancer. It has, it has a huge, you know, uh, activity in terms of uh, cardiac tonic and uh, it, it is believed to increase the lifespan and especially the claim is to cure any kind of disease or a disorder. So, so here comes a component, here comes a, you know, a science which comes from very, very traditional medicine and uh, certain uh, things which are absolutely contradicting that of Ayurveda, you know, allopathic medicines uh, or uh, the modern science has been still used in Ayurveda and Trust me, the, you know, we have unbelievable results. But however, before we actually, you know, look into the mode of action, we need to have a very, very strong understanding of Ayurveda. Only then, you know, uh, you can amalgamate phytochemistry with that of Ayurveda. Now, uh, it is also been believed that, you know, the mercury and, uh, 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 you know, uh, components of copper and, 
uh, gold, they have this uh, ability for neuro protective activity and nephroprotective activity so but however there are a lot of information which has been available but on the mode of action there's absolutely no data available and hence with the phytochemistry what people are trying to understand or with medicinal chemistry what people are trying to understand is how do i understand the classics of ayurveda in modern terminology in modern concepts so that i am able to decipher the uh, the components which have been said in ayurveda to the modern concepts so that i understand the mode of action or mechanism of action now let me try to take an example okay so this is lucas aspera now lucas aspera in i uh, you know uh, 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 classical terminology it is called as tumbe uh, so here uh, what we were trying to do was we were able to isolate certain phytomolecules from Lucas Aspera and uh, this molecule is called as uh, it's a flavonoid and it has been called as Lucasin. So now you have Lucasin which has been systematically isolated using various kinds of solvent degradation method. Uh, this has been systematically isolated and once you have isolated with all the spectroscopic techniques we were able to understand that the entire structure uh, of the isolated molecule is nothing but leucasin. Now, once you have this phytomolecule, what next? So we are looking for various kinds of phytoactivities. So the phytobioactivities. So for phytobioactivities, you know, one such molecule over here is leucasin and people wanted to know what exactly is the anti-biofilm activity of this you know, leucasin, especially on biofilms of Listeria monocytogens. So that is how a combination of, you know, a bioactivity, because now we know that uh, Listeria can cause uh, various kinds of human born infections, which is called a Listeriosis. But however, how exactly uh, the role of leucasin interacts with that of, you know, uh, Listerial biofilm activity so that you are expecting an anti-biofilm molecule or since we now know that in biofilms there's a beautiful mechanism which occurs which is called as quorum sensing and how do I inhabit the pattern of quorum sensing so that we can produce certain molecules from leucas aspera which could be called as anti-coromones okay or anti-phytochoromones so this is how you know we use uh, you need to start with an hypothesis and then you need to work uh, design your uh, you know work plan and once the work plan is ready that is how you execute using wet lab experiments and dry lab experiments now uh, uh, you know rather than just one activity you can still go on and look into what exactly is the effect of you know uh, leucasin the isolated molecule from leucas aspera as an anti-stress contributor now everybody is were talking on aging everybody is talking about you know free radicals everybody is talking about anti-stress mechanisms so how exactly this flavonoid can have a profound role on you know um, antistress as an antistress contributor that uh, was been elucidated and for doing this rather than just relying on the in vitro model we were able to also extrapolate the data on the in vivo model so especially rather than relying on the in vitro model we were also able to perform on experiments on in vivo models and in this case uh, silkworms were used as an in vivo model system and depending on that you know systematically uh, you know stress was induced we had three groups here one was the control group the second was the induced group and the third one was the treated group now what was it treated with it was treated with the leucasin so leucasin as we had previously seen that it was an anti-biofilm biomarker but however now it is also acting as an anti-stress contributor so finally you know how exactly it interacts with the 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 proteins of the silkworm and sds page was been done lcms you know all bioidentical techniques have been done but however you know to understand the mode of action now we know it is actually working on a enzyme which belongs to a reductase family so i uh, through that you know the anti-stress mechanism has been cop coping up now the entire gist of the story is how exactly you know if you can start with a, a you know a mythological literature okay or you can start with a theological literature or from a folklore or from you know the modern literature you can systematically develop your research now 
uh, apart from you know leucus aspera there are other uh, important phytomolecules which were also been worked uh, with our laboratory uh, it was from the banana so uh, in near very near to uh, mysore there is a place which is called as nanjangud and this place is you know important in terms of its geographical location especially the quality of ph of the soil is unique and here there is a special variety of uh, the banana which is been actually cultivated and this is called as nanjangud rasbale the place is called as nanjangud and here there is a special variety of banana which is called as rasbale and hence you know in total it is called as nanjangud good rasbale variant now what we did was using this as uh, you know the pseudo stem and the leaf okay all these molecules were utilized uh, then you know there was extraction process which was been done and with various kinds of you know gradient extractions followed by column chromatography color followed by you know uh, characterization and you know the um, finally we were able to uh, isolate molecules such as amylopherol lupiol stigma sterol cetosterol all these kinds of you know sterols phytosterols were been isolated so once you have these isolated this was the work which was been mainly contributed by uh, a phd student uh, for which uh, i was a co-mentor uh, so i uh, know uh, that's how you can actually look for various kinds of activity trust me my dear friends with those molecules from last 15 years we are working on you know either you know molecules you know for by activities such as diabetes or hypertension or neuropathy nephropathy you know nephrolithiasis there are a lot of activities which could be studied with just one phytomolecule now an other important phytomolecule which uh, you know had a, a huge profound effect of understanding of phytochemistry in my career is cannabis okay this cannabis uh, i had an opportunity to work at us uh, wherein now, cannabis has two major phytomolecules the, the you know it is called as thc and cbd and thc is a psychotropic drug and cbd is a non psychotropic drug as we now know that you know marijuana uh yeah, you know could be legalized in certain states of us and hence uh, for the medicinal purpose which you call it as medicinal marijuana these phytomolecules are being utilized now so for uh, for conditions such as cancer for some conditions such as autoimmune disorders and for conditions uh, uh, which might include muscular dystrophy you know uh, this marijuana especially you know the non psychotropic component that is cbd works up very very well now uh this was again studied with various kinds of uh, you know skin graft model and uh, i think for the skin graft we have done a, a previous video the link is in the description it is in detail that how exactly grafting skin graft or trans with skin transplantation technology could be adapted in mouse model this was been explained and with that brief explanation of uh, you know uh, the uh, the skin graft model then we wanted to see how exactly thc has a very important role now with that if you look into it it was a dual skin graft okay wherein there was a uh, application of an autograft and an allograft so with this combination we were able to understand so whether the animal was able to accept an allograft or an autograft so if this becomes a integral part of the skin bed so then it is uh, said that the graft has been accepted if not you know if st it stands out as an entirely different entity as uh, just a uh, you know an uh, a dried lump on the, on the skin uh, which does not become the integral part of the skin then we call it as the graft has been rejected so like this there are various kinds of studies which could be you know done using phytochemicals especially which are been e explained in ayurveda so again uh, these are the data of various kinds of cell culture experiments which could be again extrapolated for understanding individual biomarker uh, sampling especially in case of inflammation and disease therapy then once you have any phytochemical please remember once you have isolated any phytochemical so it could be either from a natural source or it is from a synthetic source so uh, example you can isolate vanillin from the vanilla pod or you can have synthetic vanillin which could be utilized so depending on upon your convenience and the aim of your project which has been designed you can also continue with various kinds of bioassays example you can take up anti gout assays you can take up anti inflammatory assays you can go for anti stress biomarker anti aging anti biofilms 
then you can go for anti cancer activity anti lithiatic activity that is you know stone formation ability uh, stone disrupting dissolve dissolution ability you can also take these phytomolecules on cell culture experiments and uh, even you can go on to certain you know fly based that is drosophila based uh, experiments also then extrapolating it the same data to the murine model wherein you can utilize rat or rodent model rat or uh, you know mouse model then finally you know your study can end up with a beautiful component of human clinical trials and that is how your drug can come into the society so you know with all this uh, uh, phytochemicals what people are trying to do is people are trying to implicate the knowledge of nanotechnology on these phytomolecules or on this phytochemistry so that the smaller the molecule the better is the activity or the better is the availability of this phytomolecules in the system and hence people are now looking for nano biosensors people are now looking for nano phyto antimicrobial molecules people are looking for nano composites okay and people are looking for you know special molecules which could deliver drug effectively uh water waste management with nanotechnological approach has also been used and very importantly you know the application of uh, you know phytochemistry in nano diagnosis so all these you know kinds of uh, interventions are you know are been well researched and if you are a phytochemical researcher if you are a botanist or if you are a life science student somehow interested with uh, uh, you know phytochemistry and with a background of ayurveda i think this is a place wherein you can actually rely upon and now what we are trying to look upon is if you are looking for any kind of mentorship we will be very very happy to help you out in in characterization isolation and uh, you know elucidation of phytomolecules and to design your studies and this is how you know we can contribute we can help in your research because what we believe is together we can and we will make a difference in research and this is what you know we are trying to bring in in terms of your the the research series from uh, ideas to innovation so you think about it we will try to draw the the entire road map for you so that you can achieve your success whatever you are dreaming of so you know at the end uh, i just want to tell you that you can always you know come back to biotechnica at any point of time if you are stuck with your research we are there for your assistance at any point of time you want to have a query then please write to us at support@biotechnica.org and we will be always there for your help because your motivation your satisfaction is our motivation and that is how we will try to drive research in a forward direction so until then take care bye